Hey, what's up guys, it's YouTube. So you might be wondering what kind of pro programming languages you want to learn to advance your career in computer science or software engineering industry, right? So this video, I'm going to talk about three top programming languages I think you want to learn in 2018. Um, so the first one that I see the most often, I think this is the most common or popular generic a programming language is Java. So when it comes to backend programming, uh, you could use C++, C, C Sharp, Java. Um, those are most of the uh, basic backend programming language. But when it comes to uh, most popular programming language, Java wins against C Sharp or C++ because C Sharp is developed by Microsoft. So uh, it's proprietary language and the IDE um, called uh, Visual Studio is also proprietary, so it's not free. Whereas Java is not proprietary, so everybody can install an uh, ID called IntelliJ or Eclipse and start coding or programming in Java. So it's free, uh, you don't need to pay for uh, IDE, and it's most, uh, it's most popular programming backend programming language, I would say. What about C++ or C? Well, those are pretty low-level uh, advanced programming languages and they're kind of similar to C Sharp and Java but they require a little bit more advanced knowledge like uh, memory management, uh, pointers, and uh, they're a little bit older than uh, C Sharp or Java so it's kind of hard to for newcomers to learn and pick up uh, uh, programming languages, uh, programming language skills in C++ and C, it's it's a little bit difficult. Like learning C is a little bit uh, higher, and C++ you need to write a lot of code, like lo long lines of code in C++. The same job or task could have been achieved in like few lines in like new language like Python or JavaScript. Whereas in C++ it's a little bit lengthy. And also it's a little bit more complex and difficult. So C++ and C are good if you're working on more like a hardware or CPU embedded system because they require super effective, efficient uh, performance, performance intensive, intensive one. They want to use C or C++ because it's more efficient but it requires more overhead of managing uh, pointers, memory, uh, whatnot. So Java is the uh, most popular or most common, like most uh, versatile, versatile backend programming language you should learn in 2018. Second programming language I think you should learn is JavaScript. Um, there are so many uh, frameworks right now. Uh, past three day, past 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 three four years, there there's just an amount of frameworks exploded. Like for example, Node.js is really popular for a backend um, server side. Whereas in the front end, you can use like React JS, which is developed by Facebook, or Redux, or any other. Um, there's so many frameworks I don't know much about in the, in terms of front end frameworks, but JavaScript is kind of like kind of like object oriented JavaScript slash um, how do I say uh, declarative uh, as opposed to imperative, so it's not procedural like Java or C++, meaning that you don't need to tell, you don't need to code how. You don't need to tell your computer how to loop through that, all that you know, items in array. Whereas in the JavaScript or Python, uh, you can use declarative type of approach, which is kind of like, you know, uh, instead of uh, stepping through each item using for loop with i, i is, i is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can say like, you know, for each item in array, it's more like, you know, it's more intuitive than English sentence looking like, so it's more focusing on what as opposed to how, like how in, term, in terms of like internal workings of, you know, array or a map, you can just focus on what. Uh, so that's pretty uh, pretty good, um, that kind of uh, minimize lines of code you need to write, and the JavaScript is pretty popular right now, front-end, back-end, mostly front-end as well. So definitely, if you have a chance, definitely uh, pick up uh, a little bit of a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript uh, syntax. And you might be wondering, so is Java, uh, is Java and JavaScript kind of related to each other?
This was something that I, you know, when I was in school, like university, studying computer science, you know, until like third or fourth year, I didn't learn JavaScript. And I was wondering, like, I was super confused because by the name, um, they, they both have Java in the name. So I was wondering, you know, if they're any related to each other, uh, kind of similar. They don't have any, the, those names are a little bit confusing. They don't have any, they're not like brother or sister language. Uh, they share like a little bit of you know, variables and for loop and object oriented programming a little bit but they are not the same or like like similar programming language all right and the third third programming language I think you should learn in 2018 it's Python the reason why Python is so popular these days is because it's really good scripting language uh, you can use bash shell for scripting like you know Linux terminal or Mac terminal you can type command um, like listing files by typing ls or moving file by like mv and then destination file to you know source file to destination file or not you can do basic uh, 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 operations on your computer using shell bash but Python is a little bit more abstracted language and it's easy to use you need to um, you, you can basically it's more like um, um, how do I say it? um, it's kind of like when you're writing code on the whiteboard you do write a pseudocode right pseudocode is not like necessarily a syntactically correct it doesn't belong to any Java or Python or JavaScript syntax but it's kind of like algorithmic um, uh, description for example it's more related, related to English language so like for each item in array loop through no no loop through each item in the array check items integer value is greater than three or something like that you just write down the english sentence and that becomes a pseudocode and the python is really like pretty similar to like you know um kind of like pretty much like a pseudocode you don't they don't the python doesn't really have like you know programming specific syntax like it's very really, very really, i would say um efficient no, not, not efficient, sorry, but uh, uh, really simple, simplified programming language. So it's not really strictly typed, meaning that uh, variable type is not strict to, let's say, integer or string or boolean when you define, when you declare the variable. It's just type of var, variable var. So it could be anything. So that's why that's what I mean by not strictly type. So you need to be careful about you know type of variable you are going to check or like compare against when it comes to you know using the variable, referencing in the variable. But anyways, uh, Python is really good for uh, scripting, also uh, uh, testing as well, behavior driven testing, uh, automating and whatnot. It's pretty easy, short code to write. And so almost, you know, many companies are using Python for automation or uh, scripting, a little bit of you know, stuff like just processing some files or maybe making an HTTP call, RESTful HTTP call to a website using uh, some uh, third-party library. Um, it's pretty easy to do that. Whereas in Java, you need to write a lot of code to just make an HTTP request. So that's the benefit of Python.